All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, well, I'm just going to uh, jump right into it. Uh, I'm Patrick. I've been uh, with New Relic for a few years in the product management team. And uh, I also have been at Velocity for, I think, seven years now. Uh, and it's just been a wonderful time. I've learned a ton along the way. Uh, and I thought that I would take the time today to tell you a story. Um, and it's a story near and dear to my heart. Uh, and it starts off about a man and his love for burritos. And, and I'll get back to the rest of this picture in a second. Um, but like any good story, it, it needs a villain or some sort of conflict. And so the conflict that, that, that I want to share with you today is the one with my legal department. Uh, so New Relic just recently became a publicly traded company, and we're still trying to find our footing, exactly what we can and can't say. And I learned in putting these slides together that I cannot show you pictures of Worf dialing up a martini on the Star Trek repl replicator. We don't have rights for that. Or a picture of a Nazi's face melting off from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Those are both off limits. Uh, I also was asked to include a, a, a safe harbor clause inside of my slides for any forward-looking statements I might share with you. And I thought, you know what? I'm an optimistic kind of guy. I can do that. You know what? When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And so I'd like for all of you to just take a moment to read our safe harbor clause. Uh, just, I'll give you one second. And if you were wondering, by the way, on that first slide who that clown was, um, it, don't worry, I just grew my beard out later. That's, that's what's going on over there. Um, so uh, back to the burritos. So I love burritos. I love burritos. This is a picture of the food carts right outside New Relic's engineering office in Portland. So if any of you are coming up for OSCON in, in a few weeks, uh, hopefully you get a chance to come by our office. We're throwing a party, but also uh, hopefully get a chance to enjoy the food carts. And in particular, I love Don Pedro, because that's where I get my lunch every day. I get a burrito, I bring it back, I wait in line, I, get, I bring it back to, to the office, and I sit down and I eat my burrito. I could do that every day of my life. I love burritos. And then something changed, something magical in my life. Now, it's not quite as cool as the ones that Courtney and John were just showing off, but I got an Apple Watch, and it changed everything for me. And in particular, by the way, anybody who gets one of these, they always are looking for an excuse to show them off, which I'm doing right now to like a 1,000 people, which is awesome. Um, just walking around, look at this, look at this. Um, and in particular, though, there was an app on the Apple Watch that just like blew my mind, like melted my face off. And, uh, and it was this one, the burrito button. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, what, what is this world that we live in where you can just go burrito, 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 <laughs> right? Like, holy crap, technology is evolving. So I got a burrito button on my wrist, and I was thinking, wow, gee, I really love Don Pedro, but he doesn't have a burrito button. Chipotle has a burrito button, and I haven't been to Don Pedro since. I need to figure something out there, maybe see if I can hack them up a burrito button, because I, I love the business, but this is too easy. I get a burrito button, and I can just press a button uh, and get my burrito. So um, the, 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 the question, I guess, is, is you know, kind of why has this happened? And uh, first, I would just want to say, like, why am I sharing this story with you? Well, first of all, like, like any good New Relic employee, I am a data nerd. I don't have quite a handsome chin, as that gentleman does, but, uh, but I do try to apply science to, to problems. And one of the problems I had was, what am I going to talk about for 10 minutes in front of a bunch of really smart people? And I said, aha, let's go and look at where I talk about things and see what has been popular with them. So I went to Twitter, and I looked through all my recent tweets, and I was like, all right, what, what have I said that people were interested in? All right, I got one favorite for Choco Taco, so that's cool. People like Choco Tacos, or at least one person does. Um, no one seems to care about my health at all. No, no favorites, no retweets, anything like that. But I got the most retweets and replies and favorites ever when I talked about the burrito button. So I was like, all right, the, the world apparently loves burritos. Or, or maybe, just maybe, they love this idea that every business is really becoming a software business, even burrito companies. And that's an important trend that we're, we're right in the middle of, um, this, this big digital transformation. And it affects all of you in this room. Uh, and and you know, I guess the first question is, why did this happen? How, how do we end up with a button on my wrist that lets me get burritos? Well, it really you know, it started with mobile devices, right? You know, we, we, we introduced, the world got introduced to 
um, to these incredibly smart, you know, in some cases small, in my case gigantic, uh, you know, supercomputers that are residing in your pocket, and they have always-on cellular connectivity, and they, um, they, they have high-resolution cameras and GPS devices, and so now everybody's got this incredibly powerful machine. And right around the same time, of course, we had social media blowing up, right? The, the, the ability for people to poke each other and send messages and tweet and use hashtags and, and all of that and do it from their phone uh, was incredibly empowering. Um, and of course, also right around the same time, we had cloud. And now all these businesses that are serving those consumers who are tweeting on these mobile devices have an ability to, to serve them at massive scale. And that started to throw off a ton and ton of data. And fortunately, right around the same time, data got really cheap. And so we could store all of that data and see what our users are doing and how they're interacting with our apps and our websites. Um, and this all led to this amazing transformation where developers who previously were like those people you hide in the back of the office and you didn't want you know, anybody to see or you didn't talk about them, they've become superheroes, right? Like w w all of us in this room are at the front lines of the burrito button, right? We're the ones that are making these things happen, and we're the ones that are, making, that are helping these companies become these high-flying successes and setting new levels of expectations with the consumer, right? Now everybody expects that, th that any website they go to is as fast as Facebook or Google or is as, as delightful as Uber or Lyft or Airbnb, right? They, the, the expectations are incredibly high. And last but not least, the operations people have been supporting all of this. And they've been working really closely with developers in making sure that we stay at scale and are able to deliver these crazy, delightful experiences when, you know, I, God knows how many people discovered the burrito button when they got their watch on the first day, but I bet a lot of people pressed that. And, they, and they, these two people were the people that made sure that it actually worked. So I want to take just a brief minute to talk about kind of the history of monitoring and where we are and where I think we're going. So, you know, in the 80s and the 90s, you really only had one option. Those, those operations people were looking at their servers and their networks, and they're looking at disk and memory and I.O. Um, uh, and all that kind of stuff, right? And, and if you ask the question, well, why were they doing that, they would tell you, well, I, I'm doing it because I'm trying to understand if my applications are performing well. And so that inevit inevitably led to monitoring inside of the application, you know, putting embedded agents inside of the software that was running on those servers, and it could help, the, help everybody understand, well, are those transactions fast or are they slow? But again, you had to ask why. And it was this conference in particular that I think had the most impact on saying, well, why do we care that that Java transaction is fast or slow when really what the answer is, is the user, right? It's all about the user experience. It doesn't matter if that servlet or that you know, PHP controller is really fast or really slow. What matters is does the page load quickly do they feel like they're having a good experience? But I'm here to say we've got to keep asking why. Because really, why do we care about the users? Ultimately, if you're in a business to make money, and not everyone is, and that's a great thing. So anyone who's working on nonprofits, you care about users. And when I say business, I just mean maybe your mission. And so for commercial businesses, it's to make money. For nonprofits or other ventures, it's to you know, serve your ultimate goal. And the users are a stepping stone in that direction. Because if they have a delightful experience, if they're pressing the button and getting a burrito, they're going to keep coming back. And the business or the mission of that business or that, or that nonprofit is going to thrive. And what it really means is that we have to recognize that fast isn't enough anymore. Fast is an important stepping stone along the way. Fast is critical. But it's also just as important that we give our, our users a delightful experience. And the only way to know that for sure is to be watching what the users do, to see every time they press a button, and to capture all the relevant information so you can take that back to the business and make thoughtful decisions and do it rapidly. You know, agility isn't just about you know, scrum meetings and, and quick releases and continuous deployment. It's also about businesses taking information and not not uh, sitting on it for months or, or years before they change their strategy, right? Somebody decided at Chipotle to build the burrito button, right? And they did it because they had information that said, 
uh, I'm just guessing here, I'm not speaking for them, um, that they had information that said that you know, people who use the smartphone were more likely to stay with them. And so that was an investment they wanted to make because they knew they would get customers coming back time and time again. And that's what all you are here to do as well. I would urge you to think about you as developers, how you can participate in that information gathering, that analytics to make your business more successful. So that's it. And if you have any other questions about New Relic, you know, please um, come by sometime and uh, uh, um, sub our booth. And uh, we've got a few sessions later this afternoon. So I thank you very much. Bye-bye.